welcome to our craft box threads tutorial. So this is our first tutorial and today we'll be embroidering onto card. So these are just a couple of examples. I'll show you the techniques and skills that um, you can learn to create examples like these, but then you can use what you've learned to create whatever you would like. And do remember that whilst I'm talking you through this, it's okay if things go wrong. It's okay, it's brilliant to experiment and try things out. And um, not everything I do goes right the first time. And um, if you're experimenting, then things are likely to go wrong. And um, it may be that some pieces you're really pleased with, but it may be that other pieces you're not as pleased with. Um, and that's absolutely okay. Um, we learn by trying things out. So I'll just go through the materials that we'll need first, and then I'll get going on the tutorial. So what we'll need is, of course, some embroidery threads. You actually only need one colour for this, but I've just got a selection um, for now. You'll want a piece of A5 card and in the same colour, a piece of A6 card, so that's half the size. Okay. You'll also want some sheets of A5 plain white paper. I've got about 10 sheets here. That's if you want to create a notebook because you'll want lots of sheets for inside. If you're just wanting to create a picture or a card, you won't need as many. We'll also need, you'll find in your craft box, um, a piece of like this plastic material with little air pockets inside. So you can use this, or if you don't have access to this material, cardboard can work just as well. A couple of layers of cardboard. Um, I'll talk about that a bit later on. You'll also want a pin, okay? So you'll want a pin and preferably with an easy grip handle um, rather than just a flat, flat piece. And um, it's good to have a, a section to grab onto. You'll also want an embroidery needle. It's easy if you have one with a big hole um, just so that you can thread the embroidery thread through it, but not too big that you can't get it through your card. You may want a needle threader, a couple of paper clips, some double-sided sellotape. Optional, you might like some squared paper, okay? This has got very light squares on it, this one. That will help with your drawing if you're wanting to do straight lines. Again, I'll explain more about that later. And then you won't find these in your craft box, but these are great to have. You'll want a pair of scissors, a rubber, a pencil, and maybe a ruler. Okay, so we'll get going now. So here, if we have a look at our designs, and um, this is the first one that I did. And you can see here, this is a template that I drew first, which then transferred onto my embroidery. Okay, the second one, this one, you can see I've got some holes in here because I'm going to be doing another squiggly line. I drew out this template and transferred it onto my paper. So I'll show you now how you would go about transferring it. And to do this, you'll want a plain sheet of paper. So I've got an A5 here, you're going to want to make it roughly A6 size. So to do that, I'm just going to fold it in half, and this is just a rough cut that you need for this. So I'm going to roughly cut along here. Okay, lovely. So approximately a six size now, so that should fit nicely onto here. I'm going to choose the coloured card that I would like. So I really like this kind of khaki green colour. And so I've got my A5 and A6 piece. I'm going to fold my A5 piece in half. This is, you do want to do this part neatly because this will be part of your finished piece. Make a nice solid um, fold. Okay, and then this should fit roughly onto there. 
What we're then going to do is sketch out our design and our sheet of paper. Um, the rubber's here just in case you want to rub out and change our design. And so for this one, I'm going to do a simple design. It's good to start off simple and then you can and progress onto more complicated pieces. So I'm going to do this squiggle like I've done before. Might do it over here this time though. And you can see I've not made my design go all the way to the edge. I've left a little gap here and here. Also, you would want to leave a gap on these two sides as well. And that's just because when we do the stitching, if we do our holes too close to the edge, they're more likely to rip. Okay, another thing to note is the card that you're using, it's good if it's quite thick, sturdy card, otherwise again, the holes and pulling the embroidery thread through can rip the card. So make sure it's a nice sturdy piece that you're using. Once we've sketched out our design, we're then going to attach it to the front of our card or notebook, whatever you're choosing to do. And to do this, we're going to want to use a couple of paper clips, one at the top and one at the bottom, just to keep it in place. We want to make sure that it doesn't go on top of our drawing. And so what we're going to do next is place our piece of plastic, the one with the air pockets in, inside your card. If you don't have this plastic, it may be that you'd like to use a couple of sheets of cardboard. It needs to be fairly thick, because the whole point of using this is so that our pin doesn't puncture the table, it has somewhere to go. You may also like to lay a few pieces of paper or uh, chunks of um, maybe newspaper underneath here, again, just so it doesn't damage the table. Do be really wary of that. So what we're going to do first is punch um, with our pin, punch some holes through our design. The reason why I've got this piece of card on the back rather than it being open like this is just because, again, it provides some protection um, for the table because we don't want the pin to go through. I'm going to put a few layers, uh, a few sheets of paper underneath as well just to provide some extra protection. It's a good idea to do this and then punch one hole, just double check that it's definitely not coming through, and then you can continue on with it. So now what I'm doing is with the plastic underneath and with the layers of paper underneath as well, I'm pushing my pin through the paper and into the card. I'm making sure to push fairly deep. I don't want to just do it really shallow, because then it'll, you'll find that the thread, it's um, very hard to get through the hole. So I'm making sure that the holes are nice and big, and I've already checked underneath that the pin definitely is not coming through and hurting the table. So I'm doing these holes quite close together. That's just so that I get the nice curve. If I do them too far apart, then you just get lots of straight, jaggedy lines. So I'm going to continue with this all the way down. Now I finish with this, I tend to just pop my pin back in my polystyrene so that it doesn't get lost. And then I'm going to take these paper clips off. Take my template off, which I can use again. And then you'll see I've made the same pattern, but using lots of pin points which I'll then thread my embroidery thread through. I've then finished with this piece of plastic or the cardboard, whatever you were using. Finished with these. And the template, which I'm going to keep safe. And now it's deciding what colour embroidery thread I'd like to use. It may be that I'd like a really similar colour to the card. So for example here, I've used a light green embroidery thread on this dark green card. On here, I've used a pale grey on this darker grey card. So these are quite similar colours. Um, for this one, I'm going to do a bit more of a contrast. I'm going to use this um, pinky cream colour. And so I'm just going to take um, the paper off first. 
and then cut a section of this embroidery thread. We don't want it too long because we don't want to be pulling through the needle for ages. We can always cut some more if we need some more. And I'm going to thread this embroidery thread through my needle. So to do this, um, I've wet the end. It makes the strands stay together more easily. I'm going to pinch the end and then I'm going to thread it through like so. If you find this difficult, you may like to use a needle threader which is one of these, okay? And you're going to pop the needle threader through the eye of the needle. You'll find this easier than popping the thread through. And then you're going to pop your thread through the needle threader. Once you've done this, you're then going to hold both ends of the thread, hold the needle, and you're going to pull the needle threader back through the same way that it went. And that way it's going to pull the thread through and you'll be left with your needle which has been threaded. The next thing that we'll do is tie a knot at the end of our thread. That will prevent the thread from coming through the hole in our card. So just a single knot will do. And then we're going to start threading through. Now we don't want to tie a knot um, to tie our embroidery thread to our embroidery needle, just because that will create too much bulk and you won't be able to get the needle through the card. We're then going to start threading it through. You may like to look on the inside of your card just so you can see where you're popping the needle. And then we're going to pull it through, like so. And we're going to go into our next hole wherever we want our line to go next and pull it through like this. The next hole, this third one, I'm just looking on the back and I'm pulling it through. If I were to go on to the next hole now, we'd have what's called a chain stitch and it would leave a gap in the middle. I don't want a gap in the middle, so I'm going to go back on myself to do a back stitch and pull that through. And then going to go into the next hole and continue with this back stitching. So here, instead of going to the next one, I'm going back on myself. Now, if this is really, um, if you're really having to tug to get it through, you'll just want to make your holes bigger. And obviously, if you're tugging, do just make sure it's not you're not tugging towards your body because obviously this is really sharp. And just tug away from yourself so that if it suddenly goes and you won't hurt yourself. So I'm just going to go on to the next one now. And then I'm going to continue with this all the way up my design. So I can start to see now that I'm starting to run out of embroidery thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm in um, the middle of my card, so not the area that you'll see, you're in the middle, and that's why we've actually got our A6 piece of card, because we're going to be sticking this over the top with some double-sided tape. So it's okay if the back looks messy. And then I've left enough thread here to um, tie to my next section of thread. So I'm just going to get my next section. I'm going to use the same colour. And then you're just going to tie a double knot Cut off these excess pieces here, and also if you have some excess down here at the bottom, you can just snip that off, but make sure you don't go too close to the knot. And then I'm going to re-thread my needle, and then just carry on as before. Okay, now I'm coming towards the end of my colour. And then just going to turn it around and then just tie off, just so it doesn't come undone, tie off my thread. So I've just popped it through another thread and then you'll create a loop and then you can just pop your needle through that loop and give it a pull. I'm going to do this again so that it's nice and secure through the loop and create your knot. And then going to Cut off, again, not too near the knot, just so you can make sure it doesn't come undone. 
and then we've got the back which is obviously the messy side and then we have the front. I'm going to cut off a bit more of this so it doesn't peek through. There we go. So now what we can do, if you want to cover this area, is to stick another piece of card on top. That can be the same colour and so it looks more continuous or it can be a different colour. And all we're going to do for this is make sure that it's no bigger than this card. So I think for mine, I'm going to chop some of the edges. I'm going to try and cut it as neatly as I can. So I'm just going to draw a straight line and just chop off a couple of centimetres so that it goes just inside of the boundary. There we go, lovely, that fits perfectly. And so I'm going to get some double-sided sellotape. And I'm going to stick it down just in a few places. You can do it all the way around, or it might just work in a few of the corners if you've not got too much thread under there that's bulging out. So with double-sided, do make sure it's stuck down nice and hard and then you'll be able to peel it off easily like this, making sure just to peel the one layer off and leaving that stickiness there. If you'd like to create a geometric design, so one like this with lots of straight lines, that's where the square paper will come in handy. That's just so that you can get perfectly straight lines and evenly spaced, things like that. So that's why I've got the square paper, just in case you'd like to do a design like that. So now I've peeled um, the sticky, sticky tape, and then going to carefully place it on top, making sure that all of the threads are tucked underneath, pushing it down nice and hard. There will be a bulge and that's okay. But there we've got our nice finished card that we can then convert to a notebook, which I'll show you how to do now, or simply a card. If you want to do a card, you could um, just get a piece of paper, you want to have half this size, and then instead of writing on the colour, which of course you can do, sometimes it can look really nice if you've got a piece of um, white paper in here, which you can then write your message on. Now, if you'd like to make it into a notebook, we're going to need some sheets of A5 paper, and we're going to fold these in half. And then going to place these inside the notebook cover that we've made. Okay, so the fold should line up perfectly. Then I'm going to get my piece of plastic or cardboard, whatever you're using, popping it underneath because we're going to do some pinning now. Again, you may like some sheets of paper to put underneath if you're finding that the pin does sometimes come through. Make sure this is all lined up. You're going to want to pop some paper clips on here as well, just so that it holds um, the paper in place when we're doing the pinning and the threading. Okay, I'm going to get my pin and I'm going to push three holes down the centre. So one near the top. You'll find it's harder to press down than before because you're going through lots of layers. One in the middle. And so it's evenly spaced one near the bottom. So I'm threading this needle. I'm going to be using the same colour that I've used for the front, but you can choose whatever you would like. And then I'm going to tie a knot at the end to stop it from coming through. But an important thing to know is not to tie the knot right at the end this time, but to actually leave a little bit of space. And you'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space. And then I'm going from the middle hole first, and I'm going from the inside of my notebook. So I'm going to thread that through. It's really important that your holes lined up. The holes that you created through the paper and the card are still lined up, and that's why we've got our paper clips to hold those in place. I'm going to pull that through, 
you'll find that still got a lot of spare embroidery thread here. That's good because we're going to need that spare embroidery thread. And then you're going to turn it over and I can choose either hole to go through next. I'm going to choose this one here. Now that just then, it was hard for me to get through because the hole wasn't perfectly lined up. There we go. I'm going to pull that through. Then I'm going to go back to the middle hole. And then turn it over onto the hole that I haven't yet threaded through. Making sure that it's all lined up. Give it a little tug. And then instead of going back through the center, we can now just take our embroidery needle off from there and then just tie off. That's why we've got this little bit of extra embroidery thread because we need that. And then tie off, you can do a double knot. And then you can leave it so that you've got some strands here in the middle or you can cut it nearer to the knot like so and then we can take our paper clip off so there we go your book's been bound using the embroidery thread okay so a lovely uh, notebook now that you can use how you'd like. If you have any questions at all, do just feel free to contact me. It'll be lovely to hear from you. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed having fun, being creative. And of course, these are just a few ideas that I've shown you. It may be that you'd like to do something completely different. It may be that you want to do, say, the first letter of your name, an initial on the front. It may be that you want to do something that you really like. So say um, you love strawberries, it may be that you want to do an outline of a strawberry, whatever you fancy. So I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you soon at our next tutorial. Bye bye.